Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Woody here, and this is my Husker game. Now, game I was actually up. trying to set the recording up live. It didn't work, which is why I was AFK in base, because I was I was trying to get this live recording. So it's why you're watching the replay instead. But, uh, yeah, this is basically a Husker game where I had two hard counters and hacks. Well, not hard counters, but I had an axe and a neck work, which are definitely two counters to me. I ended up TP into lane because I didn't want to miss the first street wave. And I went for four, as you can see here, gauntlets of strength, just to give me that little bit of sustain. No regen at the moment. And I got my Q first so that I could uh, last hit. I didn't actually use it there. I just wanted to get him away from his last hit. Um, but you can actually see I'm going to have quite a hard lane in terms of Necro Alt and Axe Alt. So this is a game where I decided not to go for an armlet, which is not something you ne normally see on a, on a Husker. You always normally see an armlet play. But I decided to go against that for this game. Now, I'm not the best in terms of last hitting, just have to bear that in mind. But I did try and get my Q. If I can try and get two creeps with the Q, I will, and, and the Necro will be ideal, but... Yeah, at the moment, I'm just uh, I'm just trying to keep him low. And if I can stop him from being able to last hit, then I'm going to stop him from being able to regen. I knew I had another wave coming in. I, tr I was trying to push it out quick enough so that that would actually stop outside tower range, but uh, I missed it. Necro actually playing really bad here. I'm trying to go for that kill. And we do actually play Necro quite a lot, so I know how Necro works. And I was very unlucky not to get killed there. I actually had burning spears, but uh, again, very, very unlucky not to get that kill there. But I did kind of ice him out alone, and it allowed me to get an extra level. So going for raindrops is the first item here. Um, now I know I don't have raindrops available at the moment. So I could have probably uh, prioritised better, got better items, but just missed that as well. And uh, tank the tower as a result of it, which is a little bit unfortunate. Kind of put me in a position where I'm a little bit low as well. Now. Really desperate to try and get that kill on that necro. As you can see, he's, uh, he's chasing me out at the moment, but uh, I'm pretty confident. I know my uh, I know my levels, what I can get away with. So right now, my goal is to go to jungle as soon as Necro gets six. I can only get to run against him. I knew he was in trouble now. And he was definitely dead. And yeah, he just give up at that point. So. So got, a, got a nice free lane. Right, so I decided to go boots. I was going to go this time for uh, just normal treads. I could have gone for the armor through phase boots, but I decided the attack speed and attempt strength was going to be better for me. I needed as much strength as I could get as early as possible, as cheap as possible. Uh, the goal was always going to be to turn two of the gauntlets of strength. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go for the second kill here, but he, uh, he does have me a bit low. Got very, very lucky not to die there to run away. Um, but turned it on him because I was pretty confident if I could have just got close enough to him. Now, I wasn't sure what level he had. I think he only had level 1 here because it didn't hurt me enough. But I wasn't too sure what level he had. But, uh, didn't take too much damage there. Again, keep missing that Q. It's a bit of a noob play. But yeah, at this point, pretty confident I'm going to get a second kill here. He doesn't decide not to win. fortify their structures. And so again, I'm just happily farming at this stage. Now, 14 for 2 against 10 to 1, so we're pretty evenly matched at the moment. As soon as he gets 6, I know I'm going to be in trouble. So I scale up my burning spear so I can get some out of lane. At this stage, I don't feel like I need any regen, because I'm not going to be able to regen quick enough to get me above any sort of health level where he gets 6, he's going to kill me. So burning spears, just harass him out of lane, stop him getting 6. That was my initial goal. Now the good thing about using burning spears is you can actually tank the tower as long as you're outside of the uh, the last creep. So as long as there's a creep between you and a tower, you can use burning spears and the tower will not aggro onto you. If that creep dies, however, you will draw aggro, so you have to be very, very careful when you're playing around the tower. Not, not to take tower aggro, and obviously I do that quite a lot. Okay. Okay. 
So I decided I am not going to scale my ult because my ult at this point against these two heroes. If I ult into Axe or Necro, they're just going to they're going to ult me back. Uh, so my ult is actually not that good this game. So I decide not to get it. And instead go for my second point in region, a third point in region. Sorry, so I can uh, I can sustain in lane just a little bit longer. And starting to plan to go to the jungle. So six and a half minute mark is kind of my my normal timeline. I'd have armlet by then normally because I'm not going armlet this game. Instead, I've gone for a infused raindrops. Necro's now disappeared. I don't actually know where he is. Though. I would normally be tired diving the tower at this point. Uh, trying to get a kill, but not really fancying it against this necro. And, uh, not really wanting to be too aggressive in this game. Okay, so getting some vision here at night time just so I can get a little bit more harassment to him. And uh, see an opportunity for a kill there and go ahead and take it. And again, at level 2 in those burning spears, it does quite a lot of damage. Necro ticks down and dies. Gives me a, free, uh, a few hits in the tower here. And now I can start transitioning mid to two places. I'm going to need the item space. I'm going to need to sell off two of those gauntlets of strength as I transition into my uh, my next set of items, which is going to be halberd. With a little bit of evasion is going to help me against PL. Mid -tower won't last much longer. And then I'm going to think about going for something that's going to give me some sustain. I'm going to need a bit of armor to help me against axe. I'm going to need some life steal. Um, for when he calls me. So anything that can help me sustain these fights. So initially I'm thinking Assault Curass and Vlads. Vlads is not an item I would normally get on Husker, but I do feel like it would help me against my team with my team. Uh, could be quite a good item. Also we do have a disruptor and I'm quite confident if Axe calls me, blinks and calls me and disruptors with me, we'll be able to uh, glimpse him back. So I just need to be able to survive that initial fall. And uh, stay away from Necro, that's my my thought process. Now again, six and a half minutes, making sure that I get in to take this move to the large camp, and then stack the ancients, take the ancient stack. And already as you can see here, just looking at levels alone at the moment, so KDA as you can see here, I've got two kills at the moment. Let's see where we're looking in terms of our game plan, net worth, currently top highest net worth. And going back to last hits. The other thing as well is to have a look at hero levels at the moment. I'm currently level 8 against level 6 Necro. So that jungle rotation making a big, big difference. Okay. So 44 for 9 now against 19 and 4. Absolutely dumps doing mid at this point. Technical difficulties. And moving into my jungle rotations. Now what I should be able to do here is take a ancient camp and then transition Dyer's back mid to mid between one. But I know my CM wanted to go mid. I was happy with that to let her have some XP. So nice when they do that. Position 4 and 5 don't normally do that in this bracket. We are playing at 2.5k MMR. Um, but this CM was good. So I decided to take some action stacks instead. Get all the tier 1 items for the team. Because they're not going to be jungling at this stage. And now normally what I would look to do at this stage is I'd have my armlet, I would be going to Roche around the 8 to 9 minute mark. would be a good time for me to finish off this camp and then go on Roche. Um, however, at the moment, without the armlet I don't feel confident in Roche. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Other matchups where I probably wouldn't Roche early would be against a Zeus with an ult, unless he's used it, or against a Bloodseeker. Matches like that I probably wouldn't go on Roche early. It's too obvious. Or it's going to be very difficult if you're uh, against someone who pushes in the lane really quickly. Someone like a Zeus, Lina. So anyone that pushes the lane really quickly. Um, what you ideally want is someone that's going to sit there and just free farm mid while you go away and uh, farm the Ancients. And the Roche Pit. You'll give up a few waves of fruit, but at the same time you'll, you'll be 3 or 4 levels ahead. As you can see right now, 3 levels ahead of the Necro. Uh, 4 levels ahead of the Necro this stage. Sorry. I was. Alright, so I see the CM mid now. I need to go mid and help my CM. I'm trying to finish off this and uh, obviously don't want to get caught out. A bit low on health. I do have my boots now. I've also got my 
my axe. I'm getting ready now to get my Sanja. I've got enough for that. Should actually buy that before I jump in here. Radiance in case I die. Uh, get Gimp's back, which is perfect. We've actually ulted him in Necro, but as you can see, Necro doesn't kill me. So I've got enough strength at this point that Necro just doesn't do the damage, even if he ults me. So it makes a big difference. Now I do decide to uh, get a little bit aggressive at this stage. Uh, this was a mistake on my point, I shouldn't have jumped in here. The Axe decides to TP in and a little bit more. I do try and move out. I go for the kill, I don't do anything, I do get killed by Axe, so... Big mistake on my part, giving away that huge lead. Um, that was good, good rotation from the Axe, well played uh, from the Axe. I did make some space, mind you. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't a great play, I got a bit greedy. And if I had an armlet normally and there wasn't an Axe or Necro, that would be a, a play that I could normally make. Um, but without being able to toggle and having those that high kill threat of the ultimate from Axe and from Necro is that was a big mistake on my part. But yeah, very unfortunate to not kill, kill, get a kill on the Jarrett as well, which was the only reason I did. I was trying to make some space and punish them. I did want the rotations to come in. I just didn't want to get stuck where I did. So yeah, and uh, I didn't think, I didn't think the Axe was going to rotate in. So yeah, we make mistakes, we learn by them. So now the plan is to continue on to get my halberd. Um, the halberd's just going to help me a little bit to tank. But it's the Sanj that I really wanted because that's going to give me... The good, good thing about Sanj, and people don't realise this, it gives you 16% status resistance, which is nice, but it also gives you 20% health regen and lifestyle amp. So that health regen uh, really helps me getting alive. In fact, it can, it can allow me to stay alive for longer than George Nagel's first. The only problem Huskers really has is getting burst. And you can see he's jumping in here, not afraid to jump in as the PL on his neck here, not scared of anything at this stage. The whole team with me as well. And yeah, not really, not really scared of anyone at this point. I can see Axe's bottom, I know he's not here. Axe is the only real threat on the map for me at the moment. So I'm happy to, uh, to push this top lane. And uh, just really positioning myself as, uh, as a bit threatening at the moment. Now a decent player will be able to punish me for this, but at this bracket I'm pretty confident that people don't... They don't have the pace to handle a fast game and they're not really sure what to do. When, when you kind of push towards people, it's actually a really good technique. If you're laning and you're struggling to lane, just by posturing and pushing towards an enemy allows you to take those last hits, where if you were just standing passive, then you wouldn't be able to take them. So sometimes just walking towards an enemy makes them think you're stronger than you are. Maybe you've got someone with you, someone invisible. Sometimes they consider, well, why are you moving towards them? So I, I like to do that as Husker. Uh, it's, it's kind of just mind games more than anything. Uh, but at this stage, I'm not going to push the mid tower. I could, but at this stage, I'm going to go back to the jungle again, continue farming. I'm, I'm definitely far ahead at the moment. Dro's getting really good farm. Uh, ES is pretty good as well because we've never got PL. Now I could have rotated bottom at this stage for a fight, but uh, I can see that there's no real point for me right now. I'm, I'm better off, like I have a look at the fight, I see what's going on, I think about it, but I, I kind of missed it and by the time I TP'd in, I would have been stuck in the bottom lane. So there's no real point because then what I'm going to have to do is farm back and get TP and stab it. So in this instance, I'm better off just rotating back to mid. I actually TP into the mid, hopefully to catch on to the uh, echo. Do. That's old me and I can get the kill. Which allows me to instead. Uh, I can't see that, even though he's dead, I was a bit uh, unsure at the time. I thought I'm not gonna engage and go back out. I don't wanna make that same mistake I made before when I jumped in on the uh, when the Jericho got caught out. So I just go back to farming. I did want to try and jump onto the Grim here, but again, going to aggressively position, but I don't know where the axe is. And the good thing about this is I knew I could pull away. But the axe is here. And this is my second day. Again, that aggressive, but it does allow me to get a kill on the axe. I get a kill back again, a nice kill, so the CM is disrupted. Unfortunately, the CM does go for one thing. And the disruptor does get away. Um, but they commit everything to it, so they've committed. Um, Axe has died. Again, which is great, and uh, they've committed everything else to this. 
I'm actually quite happy with that. That's, that's not a bad turnaround. For me in a position 5 to die, and for them to lose their offlane, who is actually die, quite far ahead, do something and for them to commit tower. soulbound and everything else, I, I, I'm not happy with I'm not too um, upset about that. Now I'm also getting closer to my BKB. Die, I've got my halberd now. The business. I'm feeling pretty confident at this stage. Radiant's top tower Just going to defend the tower. Shape. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower. And I want to get my BKB because now Axe is going to have Blade now. It's about 15 minutes into the game. Dyer's I'm Blade now. I don't want to get caught out with that. So what I'm looking to do now is that if Axe calls me or I see him coming, I want to be able to BKB just to protect myself against that Blade now and hopefully help me sustain in those calls. The Axe call is the thing that's causing me some damage at the moment and what's killing me. I died twice to it. And uh, so I want to make sure that that... That does the, the least amount of damage to me as possible because the worst thing for me to happen is an axe call into a necro yeah, ult and uh, that can really ruin my game. Now I can see axe's bottom, I know necro's not there either, so I'm confident to be able to push this tower. Dyer's top tower's getting beat down. Dyer's got one last top tower. Trouble brewing every And we see the PL. Um, I see ES is nearby, ES has ult up, you can see that as well. No, ES did not have ult here, I thought ES was. And then look, here's the call again. Right? But this time I do not work here, I managed to get out. And again, all we're trying to do at this stage, because they're obviously playing quite bad, is, is just to make space. And just allowing the drone to free farm at the moment while we put pressure on the uh, top of the tower. I see the Necro, I'm going to go in for a kill on the Necro, I also see that the, uh, I'm not old enough to be the tower this time. I see the old coming in, I don't know what I'm But look, just that sustain allows me to get that up. I know he's here, I can't see him. But that's my 4 dead. I don't know where Axe is at this stage, so I don't really want to stay here. I know he's not TPing in, but I don't know where he is. You can see I've got two teammates with me, but I do just want to back off and clear him over here, so it's a little bit safer for me. You were doing very well. tower down, I'm and I'm going to go back and finish off my beacon. Dyer's mid tower that was unreal. Lasts much longer. So really starting to pull ahead now. Um, PL is obviously not doing too bad, given the lane he's having, but... The second and next highest network, I think it's going to be the axe, and he's not having the best game. I should have stacked here, this was my mistake, I did notice it, but too late. Um, so I actually missed that inefficient play there by not stacking that ancient camp, but I did get my BKB. And now I'm just going to do a, another jungle rotation. There's not really much else to do at this stage. I think at this point, a lot of Husker players, they want to get aggressive on a map, they want to start going around killing people, pushing lanes and causing rotation, but they only need to feed a few deaths and they catch up. If we look at where we currently are, it's like zero levels, I'm currently level 14. Axe is a level 12. Apart from that 11, 12, I'm, I'm level 15 now, I'm, I'm, if I die, I'm going to give away quite a lot. And if we look at net worth, I'm currently top 3 net worth. If Axe does kill me, it's really going to boost him up a little bit, so a lot, so I don't really want to be dying at the moment. I don't want to be putting myself in those situations where I could die. Uh, and instead I just want to make sure that I'm just focusing on what I need to do. So now I've got my BKB, I also managed to pick up my Morbid Mask, uh, I need a little bit more sustain to want to get called, get a little bit of life steal with the Amp off of the Halberd. But remember we're getting that 20, it's actually 25% um, life steal Amp, so that really makes a difference. And so on top of the Halberd, another good item to do if you're not going to go for armlet, is going to be a, a Sanjin Yosha because that's going to give you another 25% factor. Like if we just have a 
quick look at it here on the map. Another 25% by having a Sanjin Jin Yasha, and you can get uh, most of that even before you get the Sun. Uh, the Sun Jin Yasha, just by getting the Sun on its own. So that's going to give me 20%. So make sure it's only 45% just by those two items. And it's relatively cheap as well. You get 10 strength from the overlap, you get another 4 strength from the belt, and you finish off the recipe, and that's 25, another 20% lifesteal. So that with a morbid mask, as well as with the level, if you think about getting the talent, the 15% lifesteal there as well. So you've got 15% lifesteal, plus you've got 45 to 50% lifesteal damage. You can, you can sustain quite a lot at low levels, as long as you don't get burst. Just by having those two items, you'd be amazed at, um, at how you can sit on 50 to 100 HP. Now the next thing I want to consider is strength, that's what I need. Um, so I'm going to go for the Vlads. Now Vlads, not typically an item I would go for, but I did want to help my team out a little bit, if we could, with the Aura. Mana definitely wasn't a problem for me, so I don't need to worry about Mana. So the Ring of Basilius, not really a purchase I wanted, but it was part of this. Also need to start thinking about 20 minute mark selling some of these braces now. Now the braces, as you can see at this point, they still only give me 5 strength, um, but that does, after 25 minutes, double to 10 strength. But at the point where we hit that 25 minute mark, I'm actually going to be selling one of those braces. So I try to call the team over, organise them to do the Tormentor we're at 21 minutes now. Um, we're close enough that we should be able to do it, but again, 2.5k, everyone's a little bit slow to react. Uh, I haven't got armlet, so normally I could toggle this with an armlet and disrupt, unfortunately. I didn't want to get caught. I needed the ES to come in, um, but he starts running away. Call him back. And he does come, which was good. But as you can see, look at me now, sitting on 400 health and I can sustain as well, 2 to 3, 400 health. That range is a, a really good range for me to be able to fight as long as I don't get burst. Right, so I TP and instantly buy another TP, so I've got one. Always make sure you've got a TP on you. And I'm pretty much ready to fight now. Now I'm not going to go looking for a fight. The idea is to be able to push a line and let them come to us, rather than us going hunting. Um, but the ES does decide to go for the ult. Uh, unfortunately, they do invoke a fight, which I'm not at, but I'm not too far away, and I can come in for the pickups now. So I'm just trying to back down now. I guess I see the neck right here. It's an easy, easy kill on the neck there. Uh, BKB was popped, because I wasn't sure if I was going to get a jump. That uh, axe decides to disengage. Now I don't actually want to go and fight Axe, but I actually see him here, so I guess with a glimpse back. This makes a lot of sense to get to him. And as you can see now, Axe not really able to, to do much to me at all now. Now we've got a 12k net weight, net lit, net worth lead. Necro and Axe are the only two things that worry me this game, they're both dead, PL's not got much farm. But we don't want to let PL get the heart and Scepter going to be a problem. So I decided to go Assault Cuirass. It gives me the attack speed that I'm lacking. The reason I'm lacking attack speed is because I'm not normally low health. Now at this point I'm happy just to jump in even though I don't have to I'm not actually too worried about it. I can sustain these fights really well. I'm even not so bothered about the arm and sitting in the back fire and everything else. Now because of the magic damage I could at this stage um, consider. Uh, going for something, even, even if it was something simple, like an early stage item that a lot of people don't feel like they can take, uh, is just to get the cloak. Now the cloak does turn into an eternal shroud, and that is a really good item for you to give that 25% magic resistance, and the 14 strength, and the 250 health. It's a great item to pass through against magic damage. Uh, now Grim does do magic damage, obviously Jericho does as well, so it's not a bad fight to get this item. Yeah, I don't get it. Instead, I decide to get double kill here. I still want more. Hey, this really could have been. We don't find kill here. I was going to call on you. I do go down. I do manage to get off the ult. 
Do you want to just go to the double kill? And then the drone manages to finish off 13 1. That allows them to push in for racks. Five dead. Um, not a bad fight. And in a situation like that, I actually don't mind dying. Um, I, I prefer it if I didn't, obviously, but it's, it's not the end of the world. And I don't actually get to push in, which is unfortunate, but they do push the glimp out, which is nice. And with only 10 seconds left, they're not going to get the tower at this stage, but they are going to be able to just push in and take a little bit of towers getting beat down. Alright, so I look in mid, decide to go mid to connect to my team and also clear out this mid wave, push this mid tower. And then we're going to think about doing Roche before going high ground. Now because I'm so close to getting my Salt Grass, um, and I know there's a double damage here, I decide to uh, push up with the team, take this tower. You see ES is bottom, and I'm actually fighting Gary, so I'm not too bothered now at this stage, I can pop off my BKB. Get away from this, like that, he's actually not bothered about going at all in this stage. Put your same ones, that's here, not really sure the necro is, but yeah, they all backed out, and uh, it's an easy kill really. And as you can see, the sustain, that plate man makes a big difference as well, so I've got armor now. Another 10 armor. So if we look at the stats I'm looking at at the moment, now you can see here in terms of my armor, I've got plus 14 armor I'm playing with. I've got plus 22 health regen. And I've got 82 strength with plus 54 extra. So these stats, they make a good difference. And at this stage, I'm actually not, not even scared of these. You can ult me. I mean, Necro is not very good to be able to ult me like that. But you know, I'm not even afraid of them. I can go in. Hacks again. So he's already done his coming blade. I know he's got another coming blade, but uh, again, just cut him out. Easy to just pick off the team at this stage. And that's an easy wax at 27 minutes against two counters. Now most people would auto pick or auto build with Hosker. Just an armlet. Armlet and armlet every game, regardless. I think it's important to consider what you're up against. It was definitely a hard game, not being able to use my armlet, not to be able to toggle. The Dyer might want to mine their top tower. And here we go, so there's an axe call with blade now. I get my BKB off, and I'm able to just simply walk it off. Now that's not something that a lot of Husker players are able to do. A lot of Husker players instantly get called by axe with blade now, and they're dead. So having a blade, having the extra armor, will make a big difference. So now before going high ground, we're just going to do a quick row. Assault grass is on the way as well. You can see flying out three different couriers there for my team. And next team wipe should be gun. We want to make sure we've got the ages to be able to fight them. You are doing very well. I'm very proud of you. Now what I do like about this game is we do have the ES against the PL, which is a good pick for an offlane hero, but it means we don't have a tank. So I am responsible for jumping first and tanking. Now the axe messed up here by not being able to 
Kanto jump in, the Drow does get the slow down in the edge as well, so again, more than happy at this point to jump in. Um, the Drow just finishing off the axe very easily. And again, the sustain from the Vlad's very nice to be able to do Very nice to be able to just finish off the, the kills there. Drow at full health, going to the, uh, the siege high ground. And I'm happy to just walk in and tank Dyer's it. And that only the Necro, who's just used his ult. I still have ages up. And it's an easy set of ages. The is almost dead, I'm not going to go and waste time, I'm just going to follow the far plan to mid. Now at this stage, we can't take Mega Creep, so we have to consider are we just going to end it? Axe is up in 10 seconds, so I'm just going to clear the out of the building. And I'm going to push for the mid. We do have to be careful of that before. So I can see Axe, I can see he's ready, I'm waiting for him, I'm ready to BKB, he doesn't, so he's not to blink in. So I am waiting for him, I see he doesn't, so I'm from him instead. BKB up, and as you can see, can't get killed. Just too much sustain now, I can even sit in that fire at the stage here. Doesn't bother me at all. with the necro, couldn't see him, um, but at this stage it's GG. So that's it ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and that's my Husky game without an armlock.